In the name of God. Hi, I'm Ali Farrokhzad. Welcome to Sizing Wizard software as Omega 2. I'm going to show you how to use these files to size your two-phase and three-phase separators. These types of separators are frequently used in oil and gas fields, so we have been developed a macro-based spreadsheet to optimize your design based on well-known articles, monetary and service. First, go to our website, Sizing Wizards on Google site. Then, jump to the download page and download the last version of the package on your desktop. Extract the file and open the folder. You see two subfolders and one Excel file as Omega 2 Launcher. Open as Omega 2 Launcher. Since we downloaded the file via the internet, a warning message has been appeared on the top of Excel. You should press Enable Editing. Another warning message has been just appeared. These files have some macros to optimize your design, so you should click Enable Content to active those macros. Because of this is the first time that you are running S Omega 2, a message tells you that Solver has been installed successfully. Solver is a built-in add-in in Excel that used for optimization. In the first time, I must close all my workbooks and open it again to implement the installation. You may see Solver under the Data tab on the ribbon bar. If you won't see, it means Solver could not be installed, so I'll show you how to install it manually. You see two tabs that refer to different modes of sizing, Detail Design and Shortcut Wizard. Each of them contains five different types of separators. Two-phase vertical, two-phase horizontal, three-phase vertical, three-phase horizontal with wave, and finally, three pairs horizontal with boot. The difference between shortcut wizard and detail design is in user options. In detail design, user can specify more parameters in his workbook, such as design pressure and temperature, material type, corrosion elements, and also it has a nozzle sizing section. Refer to our website and download S Omega 2 at a glance to learn more about differences between these two methods. Let's go back to S Omega 2 Launcher. I have prepared an example to illustrate how you should run these files in the right way. This example is a first stage separator in oil field. Crude oil from the wells has been routed to three phase separator. Vapor, light liquid as oil and heavy liquid as water. The properties of each phase has been shown in this shape. I have extracted this data from a simulator such as HiSys or Aspen. Okay, as you see, we have a three-phase horizontal separator with a wave. So I should click on 3PHW. Another workbook is opened and a security warning message about macros is appeared. You should press Enable Content again to enable the macro. If you want, you can introduce the path of the directory to the Trust Center to force Excel to enable content automatically in the next times. You see five sheets in this Excel workbook. A startup page explains to you how to add Solver manually to your Excel program. And also you can read about introducing your files to Trust Center to avoid the startup security warnings in the future. Input page is the initial step where get the main parameters for sizing. We shall enter properties of each phase here. The next page gets more detailed parameters for design. On the help sheet, you can read more about the files and find out the meaning of colors and tips. And finally, in the last sheet, you see the references and our email.
let's go back to the input page and start to enter data on this sheet. By the drop down button, you can select between different types of units. In this example, pressure is in bar G, 12.5. If I enter a value without selecting unit, a red warning message will be shown in the next cell. For example, for vapor density, I input 9.974. The warning tip appeared, so I should select unit, kilogram per cubic meter. I continue entering data based on the picture. As you see, some warning messages are at the bottom of this section. You should pay attention to these warnings. Now I should specify mass flow rate of the water. After pressing enter, all those warning messages have been replaced with a green button to guide us to the next step. Be careful that although this file has some data validation rules to evaluate your entering figures, but it is not an intelligent program and you should have more precision while entering data. For example, if you enter light liquid density instead of heavy liquid, the warning remains in the bottom of this page and won't let you go to the next page. I click on press here. In this page, you find different types of cells with different colors. Pale red colors refer to which cells that are arbitrary and aren't necessary for the final dimensional design, such as nozzle sizing. The green border cells show those cells that have a default value, but you can introduce other data and update them. The main section in this sheet is the red border cells. We should fill all of them completely till activating of the optimization button and accomplish our design. Let's start from nozzle sizing. If you have an inlet diverter, you should select this checkbox. Typically, 10% oversizing on filter to be considered for nozzle sizing. You should follow the green tips where help you to select the proper size. The inlet nozzle should be between 7.2 and 9.8 inches. These are based on fit velocity basis inside the nozzle. In the right hand side, you see a table. This is showing you the criteria for nozzle sizing based on velocity, either rho v2. You find the program default is 7 to 13 meter per second for inlet nozzle. You can change these values based on your own project criteria. For example, I enter 5 to 15 meter per second. By pressing enter, you will see the health tip is changing. I leave the other criteria empty, so program will use the default values. As the green sentence, I should select a proper size. For inlet nozzle, I select 10 inches. The green check icon shows me that the selected one is in the range and the velocity criteria are satisfied. Feed velocity inside the nozzle is reported in the next cell. If I select a smaller one, like as 3 inches, a stop icon appears because it is out of range and velocity is more than criteria. Also, if I select a greater size, such as 16 inches, 
we are seeing a warning icon which says the velocity is less than criteria range. So I set 10 inches for inlet. I select other nozzle size as above. For the heavy liquid outlet, I select 2 inches. For the light liquid outlet, I choose 8 inches. And finally, for the vapor nozzle, I prefer to select 6 inches. If you desire to have a demister pad before vapor outlet nozzle, you should check this box. This program has calculated the k-value based on GPSA and York demister method according to the article and refer the minimum of them. In any step, you can see the detailed calculation by clicking on this button. By pressing again, it will be disappeared. Referring to GPSA method, if we have a special cases in operation either fluid characteristics, we should modify the final K value. We prepared this section for those special cases. In this example, we don't have, so I abandoned them. The final K value is equal to 0.15 feet per second. If you want to continue with your own K value, you should enter it in this cell. In this version, we have considered a calculator button which enables you to determine theoretical K value by entering particle size and vapor viscosity. For example, I enter particle size 215 microns and vapor viscosity 0.012 centipoids. Then I press calculate. The theoretical K value is reported by this wizard. I close this window. The warning message is open that says this value is a purely theoretical and has not modified for special cases which mentioned before. I press OK and go back to default value. By this drop down list, I can select a case for my vessel to evaluate hold up and search time. I choose unit fit drum. Program's default value for the selected item is 10 minutes for hold up and 5 minutes for search time. If you have another one for them, you should select this checkbox to enable the cells and then enter your own times. For example, I want to consider only 3 minutes for search time. The hold up time is kept 10 minutes. There are time modification factors according to the article. If you want, you can select them. Also, if you have some slug, you should add the slug volume to search volume. In this separator, the search volume based on 3 minutes is equal to 5.45 cubic meter. I plan to consider 3 cubic meter for the slab. So I select the cubic meter and add 3 extra volumes to the search volume. User should enter one of the KS or DP parameters according to the article. In this example, the mass density at 60 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 755 kilogram per cubic meter. So we are in this range and I enter 0.333 for KS. As you see, after I enter the KS, the dependent value DP will be disappeared and the user should not consider any value for that. I enter the other KS. Now we are asked to enter the operating temperature. The design temperature calculated by the program is 73 degrees of Celsius. If you intend another one, enter here. For example, I enter 77 degrees of Celsius. The design pressure reported by the program is 15.9 bar G. I select 16. The user must select the corrosion type of the fluid. I click on non-corrosive stream. Program default for corrosion allowance is 3.81 mm. We can change it by this cell. 
the joint efficiency is between 0.6 to 1. If you leave it empty, the program will set to 0.85. User shall select a construction material for the separator. We can pick it up from these listed items which have been extracted from Megzi Handbook. I select SA51670 carbon steel. If you have another data for density and tensile stress of the steel, you can enter here. I leave them empty and go down to sizing result. As you see, by the initial guess of the program for diameter, the diameter set to 5 meters and the length is calculated about 3 meters. The weight of the vessel is about 47 metric tons. However, you find some warning message here. L over D is not okay. This program has considered L over D between 1.5 to 3 based on the pressure. If you want other values, you can enter them here. On a status section, we see that all of the required data has been filled and now we can use optimization button. By pressing optimize, the program utilizes solver and try to find an optimum solution for this case by minimizing the total weight by satisfying all constraints. Solver found a solution. Let's go back to the result. Diameter has been updated to 2.7 meters and the length reached to 8.3 meters. The new weight of the vessel based on these dimensions is about 21 metric tons. It's a great optimization. Let's see the sketch of the vessel. You can see wave, nozzles, and liquid level for both light liquid and heavy liquid compartments. The design procedure is almost completed. If you have planned to run the dimensions, you should take a note from diameter and HV over D. And after resetting, run them up by trying and errors. I write D and HV over D and then go to reset the sizing. By pressing reset button, all values returns to the original ones before optimization. Then I go down to enter the rounded diameter, 2800 millimeters. For rounding up the lengths, I should play with HV over D in the allowable range. For example, I use 0.221. Not bad. I update 0.219. It seems good. I try another one. 0.2188. Congratulations. It's the final design. Save it on your desktop. Now you can print the detailed design and a sketch. Meanwhile, we have prepared a reset all button which can format the file to its blank original form. You should be careful about using this option because it will clear all your entered data. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be so happy if you send me your comments, questions, and suggestions. You can contact me with this site and email. Also, you can go to reference page to view reference articles and training slideshows. If you are happy with this product, I will appreciate you if you donate to the charity to help the students to have a better life in Iran. Have a good time. Goodbye.